Hi, I'm Kyle Houchins. I'm a tech and a trainer for McNeil, and I wanted to cover an issue today that I've seen come up several times over the years. I've explained it to a bunch of people. I've shown it in classes, but I've never actually made a public-facing video to talk about this issue. Um, I ran into this recently with a friend, an old client, who sent me this model to tech support and was like, I cannot get this thing to fill it. And if you've used fillets in Rhino for any length of time, you know that there are certain limitations and certain workarounds and things that you have to deal with. But I wanted to just put this out there and have this on record so we could talk about specifically what's going on. And what I want to cover today is a situation that occurs right here. And you can see where this object overlaps a fillet, it wraps around an edge, it has this dip in it, and we can argue over whether this is a good situation or a bad situation, but I'm, uh, we'll leave that for another time. The, the thing that I want to talk about is what happens when you throw a fillet on something like this, and we're going to get this entire edge, and let's say we're going to throw 0.3 on this, and we're going to run it and predictably it fails because it rolls around here and it loses this edge and it makes something that you weren't looking for, right? You wanted this to fill it nicely and it didn't. So you can call me on tech support and you say, right, fillets and rhino are terrible, blah, 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 blah. And you're like, okay, we'll argue about that another time. Um, what we will talk about today is how to get around this, right? And so what I want to do is, first of all, point out that when Rhino fails on something, when Rhino fails on a shell, when Rhino fails on a fillet, it doesn't fail and just go, eh, eh and not going to do it. What it does is actually gives you something to work with. So you could actually take these surfaces, disassemble this model, pull out these surfaces right here, and these objects right here, and you could actually manually assemble these and put them together. But um, we'll save that for another time, right? So I'm going to get rid of all of this, and what we want to talk about is how do you how do you get a nice fillet, or in this case, a nice blend, into a situation like this? And what I'm going to use is what I've always lovingly referred to as the James Carruthers pipe trim trick, right? And the reason I call it the James Carruthers pipe trim trick uh, is the first time I saw it was way back in the middle of nowhere when I was learning Rhino for the first time. I ran across these videos called Form versus Shape or Shape versus Form or something like that that James put out years ago. It was one of the first Rhino training videos I ever saw. I bought both the DVDs. I went through them about 50 times and studied everything that was in there and, and learned a lot um, from James. So thumbs up to you, buddy. I appreciate it. And since then, I've stolen this trick, claimed it as my own, but I always try and give you credit for it. So um, it's very possible that he didn't invent it. It's just the first time I saw it. James is a cool guy, so I try to give him some props. Um, but what we want to do is go in here, and I'm going to duplicate this edge. Right? And I'm going to take this whole thing, I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to join it. And then I'm going to go and create a pipe in the diameter of the fillet that I was looking for, right? When, which was 0.3. I'm going to run it, and then end up with a surface, right? And in this case, we're going to flip our thinking a little bit. Instead of thinking about how to model surfaces, we're going to think about how to model a gap. And in this case, I want to model a nice clean gap, so I created this, this pipe. And then I'm going to switch to wireframe, and I'm going to trim using the pipe as an object. I'll delete the pipe now, and you can see that what I'm left with is a really nice clean gap. Right? So we've actually flipped our thinking, we've modeled a gap instead of modeling surfaces, and then all that's left to do is go in here, actually I'll, I won't use my hotkeys, I'll actually show you where this lives, is to use blend surface, I'm going to chain the edges, I'm going to chain these two things together. I'm going to run this curvature, tangency, whatever you want to do, doesn't even really matter, and I'm just going to double check to make sure my isoprams aren't going crazy, and in this case it looks like they're doing pretty well. I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to join it up. And what I end up with is a beautiful blend that renders up nicely. If we go to rendered mode, if we throw a material on here, plastic,
we end up with something that looks pretty nice. Now, the Class A guys out there are going to scream and say, that's not Class A, blah, blah, blah. And then that's fine. Fine, fine, fine. That's fine. We can argue about Class A all day long. Um, the fact remains that there's a whole lot of room out there for people who just need to get nice things blended together, and this is a really good way to do it. All right? So that's a quickie. Just wanted to show you that, show you how that works together, show you about the pipe trim trick, and hopefully that gives you another trick in your bag if you run across a situation where a fillet doesn't work. This pipe trim blend most likely will. That's all I got for you today. My name is Kyle Houchins, Techno Trainer for McNeil. Go make great stuff. Thanks. Bye.